Hello again, I'm Rob High with CCW Safe. I want to welcome you every, everybody here to the CCW Safe podcast. Uh, we are without Phil today. He is at a training uh, with the Tim Kennedy Group, Sheepdog Response. Uh, hopefully next week we'll get a little report on that, see how he did. Uh, today we are honored to have a longtime friend of mine, uh, Lisa Looper, the creator and owner of the Flashbang Holster, um, and really kind of a pioneer as far as uh, addressing women's needs uh, pertaining to concealed carry. So Lisa, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I've known Lisa for a long time, actually, <clears throat> when I was uh, the training coordinator for the police department and running the, the police academy. She was actually one of my vendors, and I think one of the, the things that I was actually drawn to her over was the fact that she never... She never flinched when I wanted to pressure test her gear. You know, <laughs> I might have flinched a little bit, but just not where you could see. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important. You've got guys that are going to go out and carry this stuff. Yeah. Belt exposed. And I need to, I need to know that that equipment will stand up and hold up. Yeah. And she never shied away from that. And actually, I never had a failure with any of your merchandise. So. Well, thank Definitely. you. That was important to me too. It, 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 you're right. It's something that you are depending on with your life, literally. So well, if it doesn't work, I want to know first. And, and it may be something that, you know, you're responding to help somebody else and their life may, be, may depend on it as well. So it, it, it is a big, big deal. It's a big responsibility. And it was one of those things that we took very, very seriously as far as making sure the stuff that we outfitted our police officers with was quality and secure and wasn't going to break or tear off. And I could not say that for everybody else out there. There was other, other folks that didn't even want us to even try. So, well, you know, and the same holds true for other departments. I saw a lot of police officers that were outfitted with the cheapest, lowest, get it here fastest stuff. And I always had a lot of respect for the way that you outfitted your crew because of that. I mean, it does matter. You've got to yeah. be able to count on your gear. Yeah. Um, one of the other things is, is she's really never backed off of that. Um, as you guys get more and more plugged into this community, you will see that there can be egos and there can be other things like that, but the people that are really at the the front edge, the leading edge of this industry are very supportive of each other. Yes. Uh, there's not a lot of backstabbing. There's not a lot of talking behind people's back, bullcrap stuff. Um, it's one of those that, and it goes so much deeper than that. You know, a, a mutual friend of ours, Annette Evans, <clears throat> reached out to Lisa and wanted to take one of her flashbang holsters. And Annette had already reached out to Craig Douglas for permission to run one through his ECQC course. And Annette reached back out to you and said, this is what I'd like to do, but please understand if it fails, I'm going to expose it. And Lisa was like, I, I need to know, you know, it's, it's very important that, that we understand and, and move that way. Yeah. You know, something that we might ought to clarify here, when you say a flashbang holster, I yeah. bet at least half of our audience is thinking flashbang grenade. So let me, let me do clarify here that the flashbang yeah. holster is actually concealed carry holster for women and it's made to attach to the broadband and you conceal just under the bus line. So if you're thinking flashbang, like flashbang, just we'll just sort that out real quick. Sure, sure, sure. Um, the other part of that is, you know, that really was a cutting edge 
thing that nobody had ever really thought of. And you were at the very beginning of that thought process and inception and putting together and then now like full blown manufacture. Um, one of the other things I'd really like to point out is, is Lisa's group doesn't have a stock room full of merchandise. When you call in and you say, okay, I want to, uh, I got a Smith and Wesson MMP shield, whatever. Right. Um, I'd like to have this, this holster for it. It's not just a bra holster. She also makes a really nice uh, in the waistband holster. Um, a couple of different varieties of that. Um, the Ava and the Betty and what's the Amelia? The, the, the Amelia, that's your favorite, right? The Amelia is, is what I, I carry, actually. It's yeah. an amazing holster. Thank you. Um, super, super comfortable. But it, it I don't know, I... I'm running know, four or five year holsters now. That's it's kind of got, got to be my go to, and it's partly I because like that. <laughs> partly because I really understand that you don't shy away from somebody coming in and going, "I want to, I want to see if I can tear this up." Yeah, <clears throat> and, yeah. that's one of my favorite things. Actually, I love it when we find things that we can refine or improve on. That's there's nothing that we do right now that when we started flashbang, you know, making flashbang holsters in 2011, there's not one thing that we do that's exactly the same as it was back then. And that's important to me. You got to keep up with what's available and move forward. Well, and as I was getting to right there, you know, when I call and or go online and, and order a holster, they're not going and pulling something off a shelf. They're, no. they're going in and building the holster once I order it. I, it everything is custom made to the gun that you're carrying um I, I don't remember how many different guns that you guys outfit but I was astounded I don't know. it's it's around the hundred <clears throat> you know and there's so many so many folks that go you know I specialize in Glock or I specialize in SIG or things like that and right. you are really Pretty, pretty expansive in that regard. Um, tell me how you stepped out and made that leap of faith and, and kind of started this journey. Well, it was kind of an accident, actually. Um, it was never my intention to design a holster or to create a concealed carry company or anything like that. I was working, and this is when I met you, was working in a law enforcement supply store. It was a family business. And I was just working in the showroom, helping people, you know, find their gear. And I had all these police officers come in and I think I was about oh, 22, 23. They're telling me, Hey, you need to carry a gun. You need to carry a gun. I'm like, okay, cool. So I start trying on all of our different holsters that we offered and nothing that I could find worked with my wardrobe. Nothing made me feel safe and comfortable. It just, it felt like a big appendage that I was having to deal with and that nobody wants that you, you want it to feel like you know your watch like it's comfortable to wear you put it on and it feels right so I ended up just kind of parking that idea and I'm like well if some bad guy tries to get me I'll just run away and that was all fine and dandy until I had my first kid and I realized I couldn't always just run away anymore if he's buckled in his car seat and I'm putting gas in the car if there's some situation where you know, I've got all this stuff going on. I can't just run away anymore. So I really started experimenting. I had a little um, J-Frame 38 special revolver back then. And I tried, you know, where can I put this? That it's concealed, that it's accessible. And I realized that there's this little space right here that I could tuck that gun. And I hate to admit this, but I just, I would tuck the cylinder under my bra band and it would just hold in place right there. And I realized that that wasn't safe and it wasn't the best for the finish on my firearm and needed something to cover the trigger. And I'm like, well, I need something that will cover it up, but that will let me pull it down to draw my gun out. And nothing like that existed. So I worked with that design and, and had the benefit of working in a manufacturing facility that did holsters. 
So had the access to kind of create and play with things. And I made the first flashbang. And I we went to SHOT Show that year. And I took it with me because I wanted to consult with people like Kathy Jackson and Vicki Farnham and see, you know, is this, am, am I crazy? Am I an idiot to want to do this? Is this safe? And while we were out there, the media heard about it and it blew up, absolutely exploded. People were calling me and asking, can you make this for my gun? Can you do this for me? Can you, will you sell this in my store? And it was just, it, it's been an insane ride. And all of the rest of our holsters have kind of come out around the same way. Like, hey, I have this need. Can you fill it? It's like, ooh, let me see. Let me see what I can do. So it it just grew out of need. That is so cool. Um, who got your very first flashbang? Who's got that? <laughs> well, I have it back now. But actually, Vicki Farnham, she snatched it right off of me. <laughs> we... Um, we went in the ladies' room, and she said, "Show me how this works. Put you know, put this on me." Put, and, and we did. We tried it on her, and she said, "Can I take this?" And I was like, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You sure can. You can sure take it. Absolutely. You're Vicky Farnham." And uh, she didn't realize it was the very first one I ever made, and so she gave it back to me a few years later, and I made her a new one. But that she is had it for a while. Well, I I can say how honored. I was just very humbled to have your Amelia prototype. Well, we, I knew, you know what I'm thinking about? Who will really put this to the test? Your name's at the top of that list. I knew that I could count on your feedback and your, your input. So I appreciate you doing that. That's so cool. And you've, you've since had some, some other little fine tweaks that were done on it. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of ours that's an instructor and very active in the community is is Jamie Meyer. Yes. And where I am all about the brute force and ignorance <laughs> of the testing process, Jamie was the one that was very instrumental in going, ooh, if you'll tweak this and do this and do that. Yeah. She Perfect. was amazing. Yeah. I love her feedback because she sees things specifically from a woman's perspective. So, you know, hey, you might wear a reinforced belt. You might wear, you know, heavier clothing than women do. Women, our, our clothing just isn't as structured. So she sees all of the little tweaks that we can do to make it more specific to women's needs. And I value both, both types of input. It's exciting to have that kind of feedback. Yeah. Um. What what is uh, in store for you heading into the future? What are you, what's your what's your dreams and aspirations for this thing? Oh wow, that's a good question. It's one of those things where you know, looking back, I never thought that we would be here. So it's like we have exceeded my wildest dreams and expectations at this point. It's a lot about that customer feedback. So. Like we're fixing the head to shot show here in the next week. And I can't wait to get out there and hear the needs that people are running into. What are your hangups and problems as you're trying to carry as a woman? What are the things that slow you down? What are the things that make you say, well, I'll just leave my gun at home today because, because I want to tackle that. Yeah. So I'm always looking for, you know, what's the next problem that we can come up with a solution for? Because I want women to be able to protect themselves and their families. And I feel like there aren't a lot of people that are specifically addressing that aspect of the market. Well, it's something that, especially new carriers, absolutely have no understanding of. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so once, and honestly, a lot of times I like somebody's input that's new Yes. But it's been around and around and around because that new guy may come up with something that nobody has ever been able to put, put words to. Yeah. So then it's like, Hey, Lisa, this is like this. And can you, is there any way you could do a workaround and do this? And, and you look at it and it's like, Holy crap, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. It, we have um, a lady that just started working with us and she is not a concealed carrier. She's brand new to it. And I love hearing her thoughts on like, why do you 
put this piece of plastic right here instead of over here. Like it would look prettier if it was over here. And, you know, we can talk about why we make our holsters the way we do and the functionality of it and what's important for safety and function versus, well, you know what, that's just the way it's always been done. You're right. Let's try that. So okay. it's a really neat perspective. Well, another thing that you guys do that uh, I, I thought was really kind of kind of a neat little adaptation. Um, you've got a couple of your holsters that are actually backed with suede um, for a comfort standpoint. Yes. So you guys have, and this is a, generally speaking, a guy girl thing. I mean, when men put on a holster, they've got all kinds of layers of fabric between themselves and their holster, whether it's, you know, boxers or an undershirt or whatever. And a lot of times women, it's directly against our skin, depending on where we're carrying. And it's not directly against like, the heel of my foot it's against some really delicate skin so it's really important to think about even just where a thread ends and you usually burn the end of a thread if it makes a little knot on the end of that thread and it's rubbing on your skin all day long that matters or if the edge of a piece of plastic is rough so anytime we can soften something up but still make it functional we're definitely about that i, I think that's so cool um Something else that you guys do that guys would never think of, um, and and our viewers out there know that I have gone over and over and over again about don't just run out and buy your wife a gun. Yes. Um, if you're if if she wants to carry and you want her to carry, you know, it's one of those things that if it's like the decision has been made, yes, we're going to make this step, we're going to move forward, we're going to be a concealed carrier. And the guys get all excited and they think this is a great gun. Well, it's a great gun for you, but she's got these little bitty hands. And, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, maybe not the, the ability to control recoil with that particular firearm or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, what would, what would be your recommendation to those new carriers out there on, on how to go about that? The very best way, and this is what I always tell new, new to gun ownership, new to concealed carry people, whether it's a guy or a girl, is like, you can't depend on what your best friend says, what your husband says, what your firearms instructor says as the right gun to be the right gun for you. Even little things. So we were talking about, you know, how rough the texture on the back of a holster is. Grips. Oh my goodness, grips on guns make me insane. I understand why they need to be grippy. That's important. But if it's going to make me bleed by the end of a class, that's not going to work or by the end of the day of carrying. So the really important thing to me is to try a bunch of different guns. Um, I always tell women in this, you may think I'm crazy for this one, but so when women try on wedding dresses, they're all white, they're all lacy, they're all, you know, make you feel like a princess, whatever. But there's one that you try on and it's like, la, you hear the angels singing light shines down from heaven in this the dress. And I think that happens with guns as well. You, when you're shooting them, when you fit them in your hand and you feel how they feel, when you try them on and you carry them and you're like, oh my gosh, I hear the angels singing, this is my gun. So it, it really is very personal. You know, that's not just a female thing. That, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a personal preference thing. It's, it's a comfort. <laughs> You've heard the angels singing before. <laughs> uh, it, it may have been, it may have been the first time I, I ever grabbed a staccato. Yes, it was, it was, <laughs> it, was it was, it was something that I, I dreamed was out of what was within my ability, but probably out of my league. And, but, um, no, I don't, you know, I, I carried a Glock for years and years. It was a, uh, an issued firearm by our department <clears throat> but i still don't like the grip angle on a glock uh it just it it points weird for me yes i know what you mean but i'm the exact opposite a glock points just right for me and i have to always you know readjust my aim and get used to a different angle so there you go perfect example of how personal that is yeah um one of the other things that I always thought was was so cool, because um, when when you'd moved away from the law enforcement end and started going towards the the concealed carrier, you did something that 
I don't know if there's other folks out there doing it already or not, but you made these very customizable and, and women felt good about, you know, they're just not carrying a, a chunk of black plastic. Right. Um, you, you came up with your boutique stuff and you get all kinds of different colors and different colored straps and, and all yeah. this stuff. How did well, that I think, so I have a background as a manicurist. I was, I was a manicurist before I worked at the law enforcement supply shop. And it's like just taking the everyday mundane things in life and making it fun. Why clip your nails if you can buff them and polish them and paint them your favorite color. It's the same kind of thing. It's something that you wear every single day. Why not make it fun and pleasant and personal to you? Um, it's like, if you look at the insides of women's shoes, even our insoles have patterns and they're pretty and guys don't do that. You guys don't care about that stuff, but women do. And if we can take something and make it our own, it changes our whole perception of it. It's not a chore. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've never asked you this and I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Kind of, kind of blindsiding you a little bit, I guess. All right. I know one of the things that's out there that, that so many people are, especially the guys and girls that are out there carrying and utilizing these, they become almost militant about this system. And I'm talking about, uh, Filster's Enigma. Enigma. Yes. You, do, do your holsters fit on an Enigma? Unfortunately, they don't at this time. The reason that they don't is because a lot of our firearms are made for, you know, really small. They're, they're the super compact, you guys would even call them like pocket carry guns. And the amount of room that's required, so we're going to go technical here, to get your hand between the grip of your gun and the top of the faceplate of the Enigma makes the holster sit so high that it wants to tip forward. It doesn't have enough keel to hold it in place. So we are experimenting with some different solutions to that, but our little tiny guns make the Enigma really difficult to be compatible with. But... I do really love that system. And I think it's an amazing option for concealed carry. I think there are a lot of great things about it. You know, that's, that's another one of those things, you know, we were talking earlier how the people at the, at kind of at the tip of the spear in this industry are, you know, it's not just the fact that they don't, talk behind somebody's back it's that they really are cheerleaders for the other guys that are out there doing this stuff well we're all on the same mission we all have the same end goal and there are sure plenty of people to sell a holster to there there is enough pie to go around we are not fighting over the slices yeah so it's easy to support each other so you were talking about the the uh fashionability i guess <laughs> uh, what are what, how do you come up with you know is it just you 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 find this person that manufactures the plastics that you need and and they have these selections for you or do you have any input into uh patterns and prints and whatever kind of thing <laughs> We actually make those those patterns in house. Um, we look at what's trending, what's fashionable this season. We try to we try to keep up with the seasonal thing, and so you know what's hot for spring of 2023, and look at the colors that are going to be popular, and come out with things that that go with people's fashion choices. Really, it doesn't change the holster; it's just the print on the outside. But it's a fun way to to make things pleasant, to make it, a, instead of a chore, make it a pleasure. Well, and I've seen that you've done uh, kind of holiday themed things as well. Yeah, we do that sometimes too. Whether it be a little Christmassy kind of thing or uh, <laughs> a 4th of July patriotic kind of, of print or things like that. So yeah. I think it's kind of neat for the gals out there. It's but, fun. I really like the carbon fiber stuff that you do i think that's a really cool look i like that too carbon fiber it just it's classy i don't know it's like the tuxedo of 
of concealed carry holsters. You guys yeah. get a little fashion too. That that is like the the swanky version. Yeah. Um. Now you were talking about going to shot. What mm -hmm. what is your mission? I, I obviously you mentioned the the talking to other people and and getting ideas and that kind of thing. But yeah, uh, you know it's such a huge showcase. What what is your mission when you when you head out there? What do you are are you looking for new materials? Are you looking for new product? Are you looking for new uh, stuff to 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 maybe change out and and better equip or whatever? Is yes, absolutely. Hardware is a huge thing. That's not something that we can do in house. So when DCC comes out with a new clip or Ulti Clip comes out with something new. That is the go-to place to get our hands on it and see how it functions and be able to create designs that showcase the capabilities of those new attachment points. Um, that's a really big deal to look at new types of plastic. They, thermoforming has just grown by leaps and bounds and being able to find new resources for different types of materials that might suit our product better, that's important. But I think the number one thing when we're out there is relationships. Um, being able to say, oh my gosh, there's this new gun coming out from Smith & Wesson and it's going to be huge for the women's market. We need to get our hands on something so that we can make a prototype and start making holsters for this and being able to call, you know, Bobby at Smith & Wesson and say, hey, can you hook me up with a test gun on this? Can you hook me up with the specs on it? That's really important. That, that moves us ahead every day of the year rather than just you know, making a big leap at shot show with something new. Yeah. Um, moving, moving forward. What is your, what, what are your goals here in the next one year, five years, 10 years? Where, where, where? <laughs> Our goal is definitely, so we're a small business. We make everything we're here in Oklahoma. We make everything in house that we can. We want to keep it that way. That's hugely important to us. Um, we don't want to outsource things and, and lose control of the quality of what's being made or the ability to adapt and change when we learn something new that could improve. So being able to expand our facility, expand our equipment that we use to manufacture, um, get new processes sorted out. We've got a CNC router on the horizon. That's, that's something big that we're excited to work with. Um, we really want to continue with education. You had mentioned, you know, people that are new to concealed carry that that's where my heart is. That's where my passion is, is being able to, you know, reach out and say, girl, I have been on this journey before and I know the path. Let me help you, you know, figure out where to put your feet so that you don't stumble quite as much as I did, or let me make this easier for you. So you know, Julie, my partner, um, she and I always are looking for ways to help educate and inform our customers. It's not, we, we always joke, you know, whenever you buy a flashbang, you don't just get a piece of a holster, a piece of plastic, you get best friends in the deal. Like we're going to, we're going to talk to you and help you and, and educate you and make it easy for you. So new ways to be able to help our customers learn, help our, help our besties learn well, and grow. You know, you guys really, you have to, you have a responsibility to, you're, you're putting a system out there that nobody else has and, and there's a learning curve with it. Yes, there is. There, there are also, you know, you and I talk, have talked about this related to other things in this industry, but there's so many times <clears throat> that we kind of laugh and just go, dude, stay in your lane. Yes. Get out, get, get out of my pond. You've got, you've got a big pond over there. I just got mm -hmm. this little pond and you, you do your thing. And, uh, what are, what are some of the, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to be kind and say misperceptions, but also times that they're just like blatant lies. Like, where did you come up with that? Uh, what are some of the things that, that you've heard out there that you just go incorrect? Absolutely not true. I wish that I could just like give you the blooper reel from all the trade shows that I've worked. The things that people come up and say, oh man, you're going to shoot your boob off. 
it, you can't shoot your boob off. It's fully covered. The trigger guard is there. Like everything, the safety is there. Um, men asking, you know, do you make that for dudes? No, it attaches to your bra. If you want to wear a bra, you go right ahead. You know, things like that. Um, I think that, that the safety is the biggest question that we get. Um, I've had people ask me, you know, does it point at your head? Does it point at your heart? I'm not really sure how you could orient a gun to be concealed and point at your heart. But that is a common misconception that people have. Um, it, it really, it, it involves safety. People jump to conclusions. They, they don't take the time to educate themselves before they make statements. And I think that, that that's important. It's missing in a lot of society as a whole, but definitely in the firearms industry too. Um, what you mentioned before about staying in your lane. I, it, it kills me whenever men say, well, my wife can't carry this gun because she can't rack this light. She's not strong enough. Yes, she can. She just can't do it the way that you do it. So there's, you know, education that can happen there that can help people be empowered. And that's really what this is all about is empowering people to protect themselves, um, empowering them with the tools and equipment, empowering them with the knowledge and education, empowering them with resources. It, I think that's the biggest thing. You can't because, yes, you can. Yes, you can. There are ways to work around any problem that you have. I can't carry that because I'm too busty. I can't carry that because I'm too petite. I, yes, you can. There are solutions to all of it if you want to put, put a little effort into figuring it out. You know, <clears throat> the thing that, that that I was absolutely shocked at was the speed that you can go from concealment to a round on target. <laughs> it absolutely floored me. Well, it's uh, because I'm cheating though, Rob. So if you're on your waistband, the first place that you come is to low ready, right? As you're, as you're drawing. Yeah. I cut that whole step out. I'm immediately here and you just come out and forward. And so I'm cheating. I'm bypassing a whole step in the draw process. So yeah. it, it's really not fair, but it is really fast. Um, you know, we're talking about staying in your own lane. Mm -hmm. One of the other things is, you know, I, it, the critiques I hear from men, um, you know, th the reasons that they can come up with that this will never work. It'll never. And they're looking at this, like everybody's walking around in this world, like a gunfighter looking for the next duel. Yeah. And, you know, Phil and I talk about this all the time, <clears throat> and that's your mission. What is your mission here? What right. is, what, what is, and I think if, if concealed carriers really looked at this across the board, no matter who you are as a civilian, you only carry for absolute worst case scenario where I'm, yeah. I'm not not hired anymore to be the first responder i'm not right. I'm not in that position like that um so i i think that's a big deal to me as well <clears throat> now you're talking about uh jumping in and the educational part of it and, and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and i want to i want to kind of test your brain here a little bit and not test your brain. I want, I want to get you to think about something, mm -hmm. see if you would entertain moving forward and doing a project like that, doing a, an educational thing that, that we could produce and get out there and uh, something you guys could share with, with your tribe as well and, and use the platform or whatever. Um, yeah, absolutely. I know I know you and Julie both have got experiences and <clears throat> and have have done done some of this stuff and and I I think we're just we can really build uh a better mousetrap if we if we use all of those experiences and combine them and put them together. So 
I agree. I agree. It's funny to think about it, but at this point, Julie and I are absolute dinosaurs in the women's concealed carry world. We we are the OGs. And yeah, so there's there's definitely a lot to bring to the table. And we would love to do a partnership, any kind of combination like that. You've got so much experience and knowledge. That would be an honor and fun. I think we could have a good time with that. So um You were you were talking about this the short term. I want to know I, I want to know your long term plans. Is are are you looking to like have your own big place with with several people molding and several people doing all the different steps? How how big how big is comfortable big for you? Oh wow. So right now, I think people would actually be surprised to know there are only six of us. We are actually a very small business. Um, I think I think it would be fun to to grow, you know, double or even triple that size here in the future. Um, we have a really <laughs> family environment. It's we're all friends. Like we hang out outside of work. We eat lunch together because we like each other. So the idea of growing beyond our little family is kind of. It's a big leap, but we're excited about it. I think the potential is there. Well, and you you guys have done so well at uh, kind of finding the right pieces for your puzzle. You know, everybody kind of just comes in and fits together. Fits yeah. together. Um, everybody has their own strengths and and the the combination of those and the different inputs and different levels of experience with yeah. whole, things like that. I think that just pays dividends for you guys. It really does. It sure makes it pleasant to come to work and to solve problems together. And you have so many amazing people that are working on the same issue, you know, as a team, rather than you have your agenda and I have mine and we're kind of fighting for seniority. We just, we don't have any of that. We have a really incredible crew. Now, what are the, what are some of the uh, women's organizations that, that you guys have plugged in with and been involved with and helped and assisted over the years? I think the biggest one is A Girl and a Gun. Um, it was started <laughs> in Texas by some good friends of mine. And I actually, way back in the day, started the Oklahoma City chapter with them. And it's an amazing organization. They do a lot of training and provide a lot of incredible opportunities for women. They have chapters all over the country. So if you get on, um, it's called A Girl and a Gun, AGAG -AG is their website, and you can find chapters near you. So if your wife is involved in you know, wanting to start shooting, if, you're, if your friend wants to start shooting and you don't know where to start, that's a great resource. You can plug in with an instructor and really get started the right way. Yep. And by the way, that's a, that's a good hint for you fellows out there that if, if you're wanting your wife to start carrying a gun, please don't be that guy and try to tell her how to carry or what to do. Hook her up with a group like that and let her find her way. Yeah. It's again, it's, it's completely different uh, physiology. It's, yeah. it's different strengths. Um, yeah. And now uh, I'm preaching to the choir to you. I've heard you say that 10,000 times, but yeah, our, 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 think... brains, our brains work differently. Yes. We, we process information differently. Yes. Um, but something that I always found in law enforcement was how much easier generally females were versus males. <clears throat> Not an ego there. We don't have this preconceived notion that we know how to do this. We love to learn and, and try new things. So I think that really is. It, it's fun. I love teaching women to shoot. They, they have all this fear and apprehension to overcome. And once you kind of get them started and explain that it's, it's not going to just explode in their hands, it's controlled, it's safe, here's how you do it. And then give them the opportunity to get a few shots on target. They are so excited. They always, you know, squeal and hug me. And it's just, it's the best experience. I really enjoy that. Yeah. And it's, it's instant gratification on both ends. Yes. You know, the, the, the brand new shooter gets to, gets to figure out how to do it the right way. And then they, they see this immediate 
success. Yes. Um, and then as you've taken somebody that doesn't even know how to hold a gun. And is scared of one. <clears throat> yeah. And, and yeah. I've, I've worked with guys and girls that, that visibly shake. I mean, you can yes. see the, the, the fear and trepidation as they, as they get ready for something. And sometimes it's a fear of the, of the whole system and sometimes mm -hmm. the fear of failure, but um, it, it is really, it, it's far more cerebral than it is physical. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so that's, that's something that, that I think people need to, to kind of be mindful of coming into that. Um, yeah, I agree. I think the fear aspect is a big deterrent for a lot of people. They're afraid of the gun, afraid that it's going to go off without them meaning for it to, afraid that they're going to do something that hurts someone on accident. And I think being able to educate them past <laughs> that is is a huge step in the process. We're afraid that they're going to look stupid. That, yeah, that's that, guys. Too. that too. Yeah, that's guys. Um, what was the group that because I, I was astounded at how big it was. Was it was it a girl and a gun, the, the thing that you helped up at the Oklahoma City Gun Club with recently? Oh, that was um, Women on Target. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, they do just, like here, we have it, I think, once a year, or once a year up north, once a year down south, they'll do those. And it's, it's really a cool program. Um, they actually provide all the ammo. So... As a completely brand new to guns person, you don't have a gun, you don't have any safety equipment, you don't have any knowledge, you can come out to the range and they have a whole group of instructors. So I think I think there were probably 20 of us on the handgun range that were there to help people learn how to do it safely and properly. We we provided our we brought our guns and let them try shooting a bunch of different guns. So they got to find their wedding dress moment right off the bat. They had ammo provided, they had safety equipment provided. And that's just how unique is that? When do you get that opportunity? So that that's an amazing thing. If they have it anywhere near you, I highly recommend it. That's very cool. I knew some I I had some friends that got to go out there and help with that as well. That yeah. Every single one of them came back kind of fulfilled from, from that aspect. And it's that instant gratification thing. Like we it were is. About, you know, where all of a sudden you've got all these brand new people mm -hmm. and, and you're introducing them into this thing that they've, they've had this fear over and, and all of a sudden they're perked up and it's, and it's like success. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Is my favorite part about being a trainer really is is watching other people, it, especially if you get somebody that that comes from ground zero and then all of a sudden you just watch them fly by you and it's like yes. wow, amazing right there. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> um are you guys uh actively training are you guys uh seeking training i know that you're you'll be attending uh TACCON here in a couple mm -hmm. of minutes. um i know your production manager well he he had just recently gone to something didn't he yeah we all pursue <clears throat> training and even as a group that's something that we like to facilitate like i told you we have a, a new girl who is brand new to guns and is excited to learn um we we love teaching we have firearms lessons at work that's part of part of working at flashbang is you you get to learn about guns and learn about safety and then as a group, we usually go out and do some training um, just to kind of get everybody on the same page. It's important to know how a firearm works. If you're talking about, you know, buffing a holster to make it work at its finest, you, you need to know that stuff. So we do pursue training. I, I have always been fascinated by, you know, I, we were talking a little bit ago about how many different kinds of holsters you guys do. <coughs> And I've, I've always been fascinated by the sight recognition that you guys have. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. Um, I've been I've been carrying 
guns for decades and working around guns and being a firearm in instructor. And um, I'm just always astounded at, at how well you guys identify. You absolutely really know your stuff. That's my right. stupid human trick. I can see a gun in a movie and be like, oh, oh, yeah, that's a SIG 238. Oh, no, nope, nope, it's a 938. See how long the barrel is compared to the end of the trigger. It just, you, you are so immersed in that aspect of it. It just, it sticks. That's crazy to me. <laughs> um, so we're not just talking about your holster. We're talking about holsters in general now. Mm -hmm. um, something I know, and I've, just because I've been there as the complaint came to you mm -hmm. and people wondering, you know, what's wrong with this? It scratched my gun. And I'm going to tell you right now from carrying a gun for decades, there's not a holster system out there that's going to have any kind of friction against a firearm. That's not going to have wear marks over time. It's just going to happen. That's yeah. It's not, it's not a silk purse to hold a firearm in it, it's a it's a tool it's another piece of my my kit it's what i what i use to hold it securely in place yeah <clears throat> um so that i know that's one of the things that that is something that you guys get questioned about um and it's not a scratch it's mm -hmm. just a wear mark that's all it is yeah or usually even it's transfer of plastic onto the firearm it, and that absolutely, even if you have a leather holster, leather is porous and it will eventually gather up grit and dirt over years of use and it will cause wear on your gun too. It, you're right. It's a tool. And it's not something to be treated like a collector's item. I think it's amazing that they make so many pretty finishes on firearms now, but I also think it's a little bit detrimental to people's mindset. You need to be prepared to you know, dive through gravel with your tool. It's your self-defense tool. And it may be pretty in turquoise, but that is not the, that's not the end use of that object. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so again, obviously not everybody is, is carrying a flashbang made holster or right. one, of your, one of your other products. Um, but as somebody that understands the business and you know what needs to be put into a holster mm -hmm. for our members out there. What are, what are the things that you say it's absolutely critical that these things are in place for this to be a holster worth carrying? <clears throat> so the absolute non-negotiable things are that the holster prevents the firearm from being fired. So, I mean, if you're talking about an old school six shooter, there are different ways that you can make that happen. But in modern guns, that means covering the trigger. If the trigger is inaccessible while the gun is in the holster, that's a safe holster. It also needs to hold its shape so that when you put the gun in the holster, you're not covering your own hand as you're trying to put the gun in the holster. So it needs to hold open as you, as you holster your gun. It needs to hold itself open. Um, if it's a waistband holster, it needs to retain the gun. So if you take your pants loose, for example, in the restroom, it needs to be able to keep the gun in the holster and not just let it fall out just because it was loosened from your clothing. Um, those are the really important things. I think there are a lot of holsters out there specifically geared toward women that are soft because, you know, we like soft things. We talked about that earlier, but they're not safe. If, if you can pull the trigger through whatever this soft thing is that's over your holster, over your gun, that's not a safe holster. Um, it needs to also stay on you as you move. It, it shouldn't be something that, you know, you have to jump out of the way suddenly and it's like you jumped and your gun stayed put like a cartoon situation. You know, it needs to be securely attached to you. So I think those are all the really important things that you need to consider. No matter where you carry, what you carry, what holster company makes it, what gun it is, those are the non-negotiables. Um, one of the other features, and I know there's several other makers out there that mm -hmm. that utilize these, but you introduced me. Um, but it just made my stuff have a, a an extra measure of concealability 
Um, and that's the wing. Yes. So explain that a little bit. <clears throat> oh my God. Wings are game changers for concealment. So, you know, if you don't have a wing on your holster, the waistband of your clothing, and this is specifically applies to inside the waistband. So your clothing goes across the barrel of your gun, the trigger guard area of your gun, and it just, it squeezes, but the grip of the gun is always the part that wants to stick out. And there's not a way to get that grip and pull it in, in a traditional inside the waistband holster, unless you add a wing. So a wing is a lever, really, it's all it is. It attaches down kind of near the trigger guard. Some of them attach in different areas, but basically they stick out kind of past the trigger guard and the waistband then can pull in on that wing. And in doing so, it pulls the whole angle of the holster in. So it tucks that grip into your body. It makes it so much more concealable. It is night and day how easy it is to conceal with a wing on a holster. Yeah, I was, I, I was really taken back at, at just, how much difference that made as far as printing where where other yes. people that I was carrying. So yeah. uh, great addition. <clears throat> um as far as uh other other styles of holsters, is there anything that you and, and I know you're really good at staying in your lane, um, but is there anything out there that that you would say, man, guys, please, please avoid this stuff. Um, you know, I know young cops, you know, they want to have something to carry off duty as well. And, and they run out and they're young cops with new families and new bills and, and not a lot of spare cash. And all of a sudden they see this soft little piece of okay. knife. Yeah. yeah nylon something that that's a holster and it's you know and and all of us that have done this for any length of time have a box mm -hmm. of, of bad decisions <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that you hit the nail on the head there in two aspects stay away from holsters that are not specifically molded to your firearm so if it's a soft cloth pocket that comes in small, medium, and large, don't do that. It So that goes back to the whole, will it retain your gun when it's not on your body or when it's not in a position that's sitting you know, just exactly upright? If it's just a small, medium, large situation, the odds are not in your favor. And stay away from soft holsters in general. They don't protect the trigger like they should. Um, there are a lot of garments, you know, clothing options that are made for women geared toward women that have a pocket where you can put your gun mm -hmm. in there. And I mean, it's just fabric over that trigger. You can absolutely pull the trigger of the gun through the fabric of the holster and stay away from those. They, they're they not worth risking your life just because it looks cute or you think it's going to be simple or, oh, it's soft, so it must be comfortable. It's just, it doesn't work like that. It is not worth the risk. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've always been kind of fascinated by the things that guys want to want to try to poke holes in, you know, so they, they're talking, you mentioned earlier, you know, you're going to shoot your boob off, mm -hmm. self in the heart, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And then you look around and, and they're carrying appendix. <clears throat> and it's like, I'm not sure you thought the rationality of this all the way through if, if yeah. that's the rationale for uh, a flashbang holster versus and it's not just your your private stuff it's it's understanding what is in your pelvic girdle and down yeah the yeah and those of a of an artery running in the inside of your leg and things yeah like that. you want to kill yourself fast that's a good place to kill yourself fast yeah and it really that comes down to the same things about holster safety if you have a solid holster yeah, carry an appendix. That's a great place to carry. Anything that's happening right here, you know what's going on. And that applies to the flashbang. It applies to appendix carry. But if you have a crappy holster, any of that is a bad option. But you're right. It's this dual standard of, well, that's not safe. Okay, let's talk about that. Tell me what you think isn't safe. Um, um, well, it, it points at, yeah, so does yours. 
Where, yeah. do, where does your gun point? Oh, you carry in a fanny pack? Where's your gun pointed when you're sitting down? Where's your gun pointed when you're in the car? Where's your gun pointed when you're standing in line at the bank? Like, if you don't have a safe holster, all of that matters a whole bunch. But if you have a holster that prevents your gun from firing, that kind of changes the dynamic a little bit. I was I was always fascinated by the <clears throat> by the people, and I never carried one of these. I I wasn't opposed to them. It was just not anything I ever did. Um, but as an investigator, you know, a lot of guys in the office would wear shoulder rigs. Shoulder holster, yeah. <laughs> and I've actually been present when you have civilians in a restaurant just come unglued because they're <laughs> pointing the gun at me. Yeah. And, no, it is completely secure right there mm -hmm. it's not going to just have a a spontaneous ignition and yeah. touch a room it's not the yeah. well it's just like a car without a key if you're crossing the street and there's cars with keys and humans in them driving down the street it's a whole different level of self-awareness you know paying attention to your surroundings than if you're walking through the car lot where everything is locked there's no keys there's no people like that it's different trigger access is like having a human with a key in a car um kind of a last topic i want to get to um mm -hmm. this is going to get to the training aspect again how many times would you say you have practiced a draw stroke from the different holsters that you manufacture. We talk about repetition and practice and training and doing all these things. Mm. Um, just, just as a number for our folks out there, would <laughs> hey, give me a guess. Oh gosh. So the flashbang was the first holster that I designed. So it's definitely got the most repetitions on it. And even when you're talking about practice drawing, that happens at trade shows. In, in a regular day at a trade show, I have hundreds of draws and reholsters, hundreds of them, just in demonstrating. I'll go home with a bruise on my hand from where the butt of my gun hits me. But since 2011 to right now, hundreds of thousands of draws. And... It, it does make a difference. Like you mentioned my access speed, it's under a second. My personal first shot time when I'm drawing from concealment in a flashbang is 0.4 seconds on average. And that's, that's wonderful, I love that. But it's because I have so many repetitions. Um, the average person off the street draw time is around, around a second. It, it's pretty quick to get to, but so then like inside the waistband holsters, that's a newer addition to our lineup. So that's probably more in the tens of thousands. I'm not in the six digits on those yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to, we're going to touch base later. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about putting some, some training stuff together. I'd love to do a collaboration like that. Yes. Other things on the horizon short term, just just here in the next next few months for you guys. The biggest things on the horizon here in the next few months are SHOT Show and then TACCON. I'm really excited about getting out and spending time with that amazing group of people, both the people that are teaching and the people that are there to learn. It's just, it's a high quality of individuals and I, I'm really looking forward to that. Nice. Uh, anything else you'd like to just throw in? Any, any topics you want to touch on? Oh, gosh. You know, I just, I want to be available to answer questions. It seems like there are a lot of times people are afraid to ask questions because they're afraid they're going to look stupid or they're afraid, you know, what people are going to say in a, in a public forum, especially social media, they mm -hmm. get vicious. So Flashbang Holsters has some really great social media accounts. We do Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube. And if people have questions, send them our way. We love to help. So I just want to ask me anything. I'm just going to put it out there. We're available to help if anybody needs some help with concealed carry or gun questions. 
Now, are those social media platforms the 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 good way for our folks to to reach out and send messages through for you guys? Absolutely. We we keep a close eye on those. Um, people can pop on our website. It's flashbangstore.com. And we have a contact us that's available as well if you prefer something besides social media. So we are very available. Excellent. Excellent. Um, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day for us today. We appreciate that so very uh, much. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. Um, as always, uh, I'm Rob Hype with CCW Safe. You can reach me with any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, you can reach me directly at Rob, R O B, at CCWSafe.com. Uh, I'm heading out to Shot Show as well this next week and hope to be able to grab some some good stuff out there for for future content yeah uh, but we appreciate everybody tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next week thanks guys bye bye